Centimeter for IT degrees and computer science degrees at the University of Reading. Um, I'm currently working with a project student who's working on an admissions website for me, which is trying to give you guys who are looking to apply to university a bit more of a feel, both for what we do at Reading uh, and also the admissions process, because I know it can be very, very opaque, um, very difficult sometimes to see through exactly what's going on. You sit there, you write your UCAS form without any idea what people like me, admissions tutors, are actually looking for, trying desperately to make sure that you write your personal statement, for example, in such a way that you'll catch our eye, that we think, oh, this person here looks really, really good, but without having any idea at all of what we're actually looking for. I know some of your college or, or your school tutors can actually tell you uh, and give you a few ideas about what to actually focus in, but of course, <clears throat> they've got some idea, but they're not the person in my shoes actually sitting there looking through the hundreds and thousands even of UCAS forms that I get, trying to decide who to make an offer to and who not to. So I'm trying basically to give you in this particular video uh, a bit of an idea uh, as to the type of things that I look for and what makes for a good uh, UCAS personal statement and what makes for a bad one. Okay, so the overall process then, you'll sit down and you'll craft your UCAS form quite nicely. First things first, one thing you have to do is tell me what qualifications that you've put down uh, that you've actually got and the qualifications that you're doing. I know this sounds quite an obvious thing to do, but you'll be amazed how many forms I receive that don't tell me the qualifications you've got or the qualifications that you're doing. Without those details first and foremost, I can't go anywhere. So if I get a UCAS form and it's not complete in terms of the qualifications, I'll send it straight back and I'll say I can't do anything until I get those those qualifications. So that's fairly obvious, but you'd be amazed how many people made that mistake. Um, the next thing that I look for when I look for the UCAS statement, um, the qualifications that you've got, obviously I'll, I'll take those uh, and I'll make, basically if I need to make an unconditional offer, if you've got the requirements, uh, if you meet the requirements that I need uh, and you've already got those A-levels or, or whatever qualifications you've got, then I can make that decision and that's fairly straightforward. Otherwise it'll be predicted grades and I'll try to make the decision on the predicted grades I'll then also look at the reference from your tutor or whoever else you put down as, as your reference to see what they say about you, because that tends to be an objective reference, and then I'll look at your personal statement as well. Uh, obviously your personal statement isn't going to be objective because it's about you by you, so generally most people go, I am the best person in the world, and so from that perspective I'll take into account what you've done from that perspective, but I need an objective balanced viewpoint as well, which is where your tutor statement comes in. So you need a good tutor statement. This means, of course, um, that you need to be, well, I guess, fairly good at what you're doing in, in, uh, in your actual college or school at the moment. And by good, I just mean um, how well that you work, are you disruptive or not, or things like that, um, any interests that you seem to show. I mean, if, if you, your tutor's going to write a good report about you, you basically need to show passion and enthusiasm and ask questions in the classes uh, that, you, that you do at A-level so that they can see that you're very interested in that subject, and then that will shine through in the reference that they write. In terms of what you write, which obviously you have more control over, um, it's not so much... I, I know a lot of people get caught up in, and they worry about the way that they write and whether the grammar's okay and the spelling's okay and things like that. The spelling should be okay because you have a word processor, so at the end of the day you've not really got much of an excuse for, for writing bad spelling. Um, but as for grammar, um, you don't need to obsess over that. That's not the key things. I'll never look at an application form and think this person's not going to come into an IT or a computer science degree because their grammar's bad. Because believe me, a lot of computer scientists' grammar is bad. Um, you're here to code, not to write reports. That said, you do at least need to, to, to have a, a level of English that's proficient enough that you can cut it um, uh, at a degree. So that's why we require English language GCSEs at a certain level. So, what I'm really looking for is evidence that you're interested in the subject, whether it's IT or computer science or whatever it is. Um, most people's personal statements start off somewhere along the lines of, I've always been interested in computer science and programming ever since I was about 10, and they'll start off like this, and the amount of people that I read like that, it's, it's quite amusing. Now, that's fine, I have no problem with a UCAS form like that, I just think, I just read every single one that says that, and I'm like, oh, another one who's been into computers since they were two. Um, so I tend to like, you know, you blank that out to a bit because it doesn't tell me anything about you. It doesn't tell me anything about your personal interests or why you're interested in IT. Making broad sweeping statements like, like that are, are fairly useful, but I need to see what is it about you that makes you interested in computer science or IT um, and that makes me want to think that person would do really well on this course. So 
What things have you done? I need examples, specific concrete examples of the things that you've done or the things that you like to do uh, or the technologies that have really captured your interest. So we don't require you to have done any programming here at Reading and so if you've never done any programming before then examples possibly are going to be quite difficult for you, for you to do. But something has to have given you a spark of interest in IT or computer science for you to want to do a computer science or IT degree. What is it? What is it about this field that really captures your interest? Is it a technology? Uh, is it something you've read uh, in uh, either online or in a newspaper or a magazine or something like that? Is it something your friend's done or your, your, your parents have done or brother or sister or something like that? And what is it about that? I want you to tell me um, what it is that this field you find so interesting. If I can see some of the enthusiasm and passion for the field uh, that you've got shining through in your personal statement, better still, if I can see absolute concrete examples of the things that you've done uh, that have made me, me think to myself, oh wow, they've done this, they've done that off their own bat, they really must be into it. Then I can see that this is a person who has an interest in this field and that interest is likely to carry them through for those three years. So I guess that's what I'm saying, there's two different things that I look for. Firstly, are you academically capable enough of doing the actual degree? Uh, and that will show through either in the qualifications that you've got so far and the grades that you've got and also your personal tutor's statement. Uh, so that will show me if you're capable of doing it. And then I'm looking for, have you got the interest enough to sustain you for the next three or four years or whatever it is um, through the actual degree itself? So in other words, have you got the passion behind you to actually want to do this ultimately as a career at the end of the day? Because the last thing we want is for people to start the degree, either get bored or lack motivation or just think, you know, this is the wrong degree for me. We try to make sure that the students that we get do the degrees that they want to do that best fit their skills and best fit their interests. So that's what I'm looking for, for you to show me that you've got the passion and uh, the, the energy, if you like, and the interest to do this degree as much as the actual abilities to do it. So I hope that's given you a bit of an insight into what into what I as an admissions tutor actually look for when it comes to you writing your degree, uh, your UCAS statement for the degree. Have to stress at this stage that that's just what I personally look for and every admissions tutor is different unfortunately. But I think you'll find that that's advice, certainly as far as a personal statement goes, that should carry you through when it comes to writing your UCAS form. Um, and that hopefully that gives you a bit more of an indication for the type of things that you need to put down in your UCAS 4. If you do have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, email address is michael.evans at reading.ac.uk. One of the first tests that I look for is can you spell Michael properly? You're amazed how many people can't, and if you can't, you don't get through to me. So um, if you can write my email address down properly. If you've got any questions at all, feel free to contact me, uh, and I'll, I'll try and sort you out and answer them as best I can. So, cheers.